Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Paracast. We are in the Hong Sulin Studios once again. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the love and support you guys sent me for the new baby being born. I, as I said in the, the previous episode about drugs, had the baby and she's she's crying and lots of lots of shitting and you know lots of milk being drank. But we're in great spirits, great health, and uh, everything's going great. So and she's sucking. Yep, she is very much sucking, very much sucking in a good way. Not yeah. in like, uh, not in like you dropped the baseball and you didn't get the out, or you know you missed the touchdown or the kickoff, like that kind of sucking. What do you call that thing you put in the baby's mouth? A pacifier. Yeah, I thought you did. Yeah. Wow. What do you call it? I'm pretty sure we don't call it a pacifier. No. Yeah. But I was like a lolly. I don't know something else. Eh? Hmm. But at the same time. You know, Pacifier in New Zealand is actually like a really shit rock band. Really? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> they used to be called Shehard, and then 9-11 came around and it was too close to Jihad. Oh. And then they changed their name to Pacifier. Oh, fuck me. Bunch of cunts. <laughs> oh, to be honest, actually, they're not too bad, but I mean, you know. What kind of rock and roll did they play? Were they yeah. like just rock? Or I were could they... show you a bit if you, or, you know, like down the line. I yeah. could definitely, you know, introduce you to Shehard slash <laughs> Pacifier, if you know what I mean. They actually had a pretty cool album, uh, sorry, um, a pretty cool video clip that was like based on Clockwork Orange. Huh. Yeah, that was maybe the highlight of that band, I would say. <laughs> or, you know, like, they were all right. They are all good. But like, you know, that, that actual video clip was pretty decent. All right, for mean. some reason, after you said that, I just had this picture of like these New Zealand dudes hanging out in like a bar, and there's like some backpacker girl in there or something. Like, yeah, I used to belong to a band called Pacifier. Like, like uh, we had uh, like a pretty pretty big hit, and it, it was big. Yeah. And the girl's like, yeah, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Can, so, can, can you fuck off? Yeah. Now? Can Can you go away now? Yeah. So. No, the the, the lead singer, <clears throat> the guy. I think I'm pretty sure his name's John Too Good. Digging John himself. Too Good. I think his name is John Too Good. I'm pretty sure, but he's <laughs> actually pretty talented. Like he's actually pretty decent. So, like they actually had a few hits, a few tunes, but they were cool, or like they were reasonably cool when they were just she hard. Mm. And then everybody was like, "You fucking pieces of shit!" When they they got all worried about their trying to break into America and you know mm. other markets or whatever and then changing right. their name because of the shihad jihad thing right and then I was like come on guys you fucking losers and then <laughs> and then to change your name to pacifier I was like come on you're just <laughs> nah, lo- you losing just, in many ways there yeah absolutely and I think they did eventually go back to shihad yeah so it was too late though they had already 9-11 themselves right? just dumb yeah yep. well uh, kind of oh yeah and happy bir- oh, sorry, happy birthday happy baby Oh, happy baby. <laughs> happy baby day. Happy, yeah, like, okay, uh, disclaimer, I haven't slept last night. I was pretty fucking... I had a good night last night. So I'm... I'm shout down. out? Yeah, shout out, Steve-O. You know, you know who you are. <laughs> and, um... Oh, fuck. How am I forgetting? How am I forgetting his name? He's going to kill me now. Jack? Jack, yeah. God damn it. Sorry, Jack, if you ever hear this... You know I love you. So <laughs> I was gonna call you Gus, and then I was like, there was no Gus last night. Oh, you but can't anyway. forget about Donnie either. Oh, and Donnie, that's a good point. Yeah, we had a good text right back. Thanks, Donnie. Mm. But yeah, shout out Steve-O. And all all people from Beer Geek. So yeah, like that's that's where his that's where the party starts. That's where John's night was sponsored by. So, um, so you kind of go along with what you were talking about. Um, Pacifier changing their name. From uh, what Why was would it? They do that? Why would they do that? Jack? What the, what did they change it? From? Oh, sorry, Shihad, Jihad, yeah. Shihad, Jihad to Pacifier. Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Islam today. Mm-hmm. How do you feel, John? How does that make you feel? Does it make you? Is it cringe worthy? Well, I think if anybody has listened to anything that I've said on this podcast, you probably know I'm pretty critical of religion, mm. and Islam is not a particularly good exponent of religion. No. So, it's not a good category for me, <clears throat> mm. I'm going to be honest, and I wouldn't say Islam is really achieving in that bad category. Right. It's kind of, you know, double F. Right, right. So, um, I guess what we'll do here is we've got a few stories that we're going to talk about and kind of just uh, digest a bit, and then we're actually going to talk about a few different sects of Islam. Just because maybe people aren't completely familiar with what uh, different sects in Islam believe or what 
uh, I guess rules they adhere to. So uh, the first story that we're gonna we're gonna talk about is it comes from the BBC News. Um, it is about. Did you fact check that? No, I did not. It's not been fact checked. It should be fact checked. Better put that in the Google fact checking thing that somebody's well, making. I snopes it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think the BBC's clean. Yeah, I think so too. They're they're pretty reasonable for the most part. So there's maybe other news agencies that we probably wouldn't quote, but we can go with the BBC. Yeah. What? Who are we kidding, John? We're acting like we're the the moral pillar of like reporting news. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it is good to be. Uh, it is good it to is have good to the be on facts, the, Yeah, it is good to be on the factual side <laughs> if, we're, if we're going to get into something serious. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, yeah, you're right, Chad. Fuck it. Fuck the facts. Let's, <laughs> just, yeah, let's just get it done. Yeah, let's, let's just do it. Let's just do this something shit. fake, all right? Yeah. So uh, this, this story, as I said, is from the BBC. It's about uh, Pakistan. Um, it happened on February 17th, which was the day after my daughter's birth. Um, but it, it kind of it, it carried on throughout the weekend and then also into this week. But uh, in Pakistan, um, there were a hundred people killed uh, at a Sufi shrine attack. So by militants, or I guess ISIS, if you want to call it that. So Pakistan says it has killed more than a hundred militants in a security crackdown following Thursday's attack on a shrine that left at least eighty people dead. I'm sorry, I miss I miss said what that actually said. A hundred militants have been killed. Yeah, that was the that was the response. Right. Yeah. So, and then eighty people also died in the wake of that. So, but there total. was there was a there was a number of attacks throughout the week. So mm. it probably did get pretty close to a hundred. Yeah. And then, but but basically, a uh, few small scale attacks here and there against the police and this and that and mm. sort of failed attempts. But like the one, yeah, like the one at the Sufi shrine, just right. killed like eighty people. So a suicide bomber blew himself up among certain devotees at the the Sufi shrine in the town of uh, Shiwan in Pakistan, and then basically, basically Pakistan reacted with raids across the country by lashing out, also uh, at Afghanistan, which it accuses of tolerating militant militant sanctuaries. Yeah. So, the so-called uh, Islamic State um, did claim to carry out the attacks, um, but it is the latest string of bombings um, by the jihadist group. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the really interesting thing that I that I saw from reading around that stuff mm-hmm. a week or so or a few days ago. Mm-hmm. I don't actually remember what the fucking day is today. There you go. <laughs> but like, yeah, about ten minutes. Oh, the twenty fifth. Yeah, let's say a week ago. <laughs> as um, basically, Pakistan is in the same kind of boat as America in terms of like it has this like military. Uh, well, you wouldn't say it's a military industrial complex because they're not actually making anything right but they're buying it in right so like they have this military comp like just dictatorship basically that actually needs to have islamic terrorism to like self-fund itself or like right. to like to give itself uh recognition or right. like purpose. in order to put tax on the people and say listen we've got to yeah. protect ourselves here exactly right so in order for the generals to be just running ship and like just you know yeah like putting the money in there and like investing in the weapons and shit mm-hmm. And that whole fucking ecosystem, yeah, right. they 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 need these terrorist attacks. So it's mm-hmm. like there's this fucking chicken and egg thing going on here all the time, where like they kind of try and smack down the militants a little bit, and right. then it's like, bah, but we can't like actually can't pull you wipe out. Them out. Yeah, like, we can't pull you out by the fucking roots and actually get rid of you. Right. We just cut you down, and then we'll take out a few high level leaders and shit, do mm-hmm. some response shit, and then like you can grow back again because. You're actually kind of like self perpetuating our fucking military state, if you right. know what I mean. Right. Which is just fucked up, if you right. know what I mean. And so it's like, well, it's just, that's just like, there's this, that's, that's Muslim people <clears throat> killing Muslim people, if right. you know what I mean. And it's like uh, underreported, I think. Yeah, well, that was something that you and I talked about off the air about how. I am um, actually conflating those two things, if anybody is actually listening to me. I'm probably being a bit of a dick there, but like, <laughs> I, I kind of wanted to tie those two things in together. But like, basically, 
self perpetuating fucking military state, Pakistan. Right. But like these border wars, like Afghanistan, Pakistan, even into India, mm. Iran, fucking the Kurds, mm. all this shit. It's like, man, you guys are killing each other. What the fuck's going on? No one gives a shit. Right. Why? Why does no one care? Right. I actually kind of care. Mm. You know? And I'm right. not a good person. <laughs> so like why the fuck are people not putting oh, come more on, John. why are people not putting more fucking thought and more like pressure on this shit to change right you're Don't absolutely fucking right tell me about how shit Christianity is or how shit fucking white guys are or fucking how shit like this on this crime is and all this shit it's like there's a fucking huge religion out there mm. that's up to fuck all in the world in the 21st century right it needs to be checked Right, absolutely. It's getting a fucking free pass, man. Mm. And it's like when what's what's baffling about it as well. And you and I talked about this also off the air. Was yes, they are getting a free pass, but like in order for people to actually change, they have to change themselves. Mm. You know what I mean? And you just don't see that in most Muslim communities. Like yeah. they're just happy to, like you said earlier. Um, conservative or I guess uh, more left leaning Muslim populations like they still believe in like like discriminating against gay yep. people or other people of different religions or something of that nature I think what you mean in terms of that or what we were talking about before is like mm -hmm. we talk about moderate Muslims mm -hmm. and like just actually think about that for a minute what the fuck does that mean All right. right so do you ever say moderate Christians you don't say that, right? Or like, really you know, not. a moderate Christian is probably a lapsed Christian who doesn't actually, isn't a fucking Christian anymore. Right, you know exactly. I mean? Someone who fucking yeah. run away from the, the religion. Maybe a moderate Christian now is a Catholic. Maybe. But like, it's like you, you say a conservative Christian, right? Mm -hmm. Or like, generally speaking, you say something like that or you're right, an evangelical right. Christian, but like, you know, a conservative Christian, whatever. Right. So that's the narrative, right? Mm -hmm. So here we have conservative Christians. Mm hmm that tolerate a whole lot of just normal 21st century shit going on and right. really don't go to town and like, you know, turn up at fucking a, say, mystical fucking Christian festival and fucking blow themselves up there. Right, exactly. You know? And it's like, but you have moderate Muslims mm -hmm. who don't do that either, but basically kind of like condone it, don't reform it, just kind of give it a pass. Right. And we say that they're moderate Muslims even though they don't allow like dress codes or if you know what I mean like they're very mm -hmm. hard line in terms of like the, the sexuality of a woman for example right. or just what's going on with gay people and shit and right. it's like how the fuck in the 21st century can like a religion that kind of represents for 1.6 billion people mm. be like you know what I don't like gays yeah it's like what the fuck and is no that? one says you know? anything like, about it and it's like but because I don't fucking throw them off a roof or I don't stone them to death, I'm a good person. Right. I'm the good guy. Right. I fucking hate gays. I'll be discriminatory to gays. I'll be fucking. I'll go to town and I'll do everything I can to be a cunt to gays. Mm. But I'm not going to kill them. Right. So I'm a moderate. Right. I'm the good guy. What? Where the fuck does that come from? Mm. No one else gets a pass like that. No. And no one should get a pass like that. No. Because it's the 21st century. Right. And this is just bullshit. Hmm. And it's just like, where, what, what the fuck? So all of the narrative is like conservative Christian, moderate Muslim. Like, just think of the fucking words that we're playing with here. <laughs> but conservative Christians, I'm not like, I'm not going to bat for them, if you know what I mean. I'm not a conservative Christian and fuck them too. Mm. Fuck them too. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they're not the people like walking into some fucking mall or plaza not, or just fucking church people. or whatever and blowing people up and killing themselves. Exactly. Or, I mean, if you can find like one, two, three, five examples, good luck to you. <clears throat> but if you want to go and see what's happening in Islam or like with the Muslim mm. people or like, you know, Muslims in general, like especially in the Middle East, mm. there's thousands, like even from like 2001, if you start at 2001 to now, mm. You're literally talking about thousands of individual attacks. Mm. And it doesn't matter that most of those, far north of 80% of those, are on other Muslims. That that doesn't mean shit. Right. People are taking a religion and doing ridiculously weird shit with it. Mm -hmm. Wrong shit with it. Right. And we're not doing 
anything to really check it. Right. And in fact, we call the people that don't get insanely crazy and batshit and fucking kill themselves, Mm -hmm. we call them moderate. And it's like, they're not moderate. No. They're doing nothing. They're doing nothing that's moderate. They're doing nothing to check that shit. Mm. They're the people that need to reform this shit. And no one, like, no one's doing that. No. Well kind of it's it's still along the same lines of, of what we're talking about but it's it's kind of a segue into something also like a form of thought i guess but <clears throat> like would you say this about islam and christianity like uh christianity now is like uh on its if you if you look at two different kinds of battlefields so you have um basically a thought battlefield or like an, an ideas battlefield then you have a physical battlefield. So right now, you could say maybe Christianity is it's on the battlefield of the mind. It's Whereas natural. it's it's like people are only debating the facts of what Christianity is, but no one is actually going to arms over it. Whereas Islam is still in like a hardline stance where Christianity was 500 years ago, where people were going to war over Christianity in the Middle East, whereas now Islam is doing that. Um, so, would you almost say that Islam is maybe 500 years behind, uh, maybe the changing of the guard that Christianity has gone through over the last 500 years? I think I think you could make claims like that, but you have to like just think of somewhere like <clears throat> Ireland. Mm. Why is there a Northern Ireland? Mm. What was happening when we were growing up, like in terms of the troubles? Right. Like there was a massive sectarian Christian violence going on in our lifetimes, man. Mm. If you know what I mean, between those two countries, or between essentially Britain and you know Northern Ireland by extension, mm-hmm. and like the IRA and you know Ireland, and mm-hmm. like that kind of has petered out and it's kind of sort of been resolved and shit. Mm. But it's like that's not five hundred years ago. If There's you know still what I mean. tension. Yeah, still tension, and um, I don't know, like I. I, I do I do kind of agree with that thesis a little bit, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I feel like Christianity, right to this day, still has. It still has militant. Yeah, like, there's still a lot of roots. Fear. Yeah. So, but I mean, if you if you want to get like analytical about it and like crunch the numbers, mm-hmm. it doesn't compare. Like you know, right? No, Islam, certainly yeah, not. Islam is definitely in just this fucking powder keg right now. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Not to mention, if you and I were 2,000 miles east of here, or 3,000 miles east of here, the very fact of you and I having a conversation like this, someone could storm through the walls and behead us because they don't agree with the ideas that we have. Yeah. So that's something don't that worry, you have bro. to... You play your cards, right? Yeah. It still happen, bro. That's true. That's right. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I, st- I still got in here this afternoon. Yeah. Fuck, man. <laughs> That's how you want, man. If I can do it. But anyway. <laughs> Anybody like, could, eh? One other thing, though, there as well is, like, I think there's a there's a big difference between the, the centralization of Christianity mm. and the decentralization of Islam. Like, mm. nobody speaks for Islam. Right. Nobody puts their fucking hand up. Right. And it's like, within reason, that's fair enough, because there's, there, there is nobody. There, there is no pope figure. Right. There are no like archbishops and shit. Like, right. well, I mean, you know, the imams or whatever. But like, you're pretty much dealing with like, almost like just like university fucking rectors or like just exactly. heads of universities. If or you whatever. look at the West, like who who is it that is like, basically the mouthpieces for Islam right now? What do we have? We have uh, Reza Aslan. Is that his name? No, but I mean, if if you really hone in on the schools, like I mean, like that mm. guy's a fucking yeah, he's a fucking. Piece of shit. Or I mean, like you know, he's a, just a mouthpiece or whatever. Right. Like, he's nothing creditable mm. or creditable. I don't think. But like, if you truly <clears throat> go, like, if you really hone it back and say, like, where is your Pope analogy? Mm. Like, not like a columnist, bit man guy on Fox or CNN or whatever. Like, your, your actual Pope of Islam. Right. Right. I mean, where's that guy? So that you can like just hit him up and hit him up and hit him up and be like, hey, 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 Pope pedophilia. Hey, Pope pedophilia. Hey, Pope pedophilia. Hey, Pope, all the bad shit about Christianity. Right. Bang that shit. Bang that shit. Why right. the fuck not? Right. That guy's responsible for it. Mm. Little by little, it kind of changes or it just kind of becomes irrelevant or whatever. Right. You just fucking, it's all straw, man. It's bullshit. Right. Where's the fucking, where's the guy to actually hit about this militant, like, Islamism? In Islam, right. There's just nothing going on there. Like, it's like, 
there's this guy's school and there's this guy's school and this guy's a peaceful school and it's like well he doesn't speak for me and it's it's all this right. wishy washy it's shit. chaotic it's like imagine imagine thinking of university life in America or like just in the West mm-hmm. say but we'll just we'll just say America mm-hmm. so imagine imagine if you thought everything was wrong about like say secular thought like modern Western secular thought mm-hmm. where would you go to behead that if you know what I mean mm. like there isn't like a secular 21st century pope if you know what I mean right like there's like universities here and here and here and here and they have all different ideas about politics and history and fucking economics and shit mm-hmm. and you cut that head off and then this head says that, that that I don't speak for that head or whatever right it's like that if you right. know what I mean you can't kill that mm-hmm. it's like it's it's over like hundreds or thousands of universities if you know Mm -hmm. what I mean in America right and then by extension the world you know by a factor of 10 whatever Mm -hmm. so Islam is like that too it's like there's nobody to go to and say what the fuck is going on in Pakistan why the fuck is like hardline people taking scripture scriptural Mm. shit and doing that there's no head of the mosques yeah so to speak nobody speaks for anybody so it's all just conveniently like well I don't know what they're doing so yeah it's like pass the buck it's like it's like what the fuck? Hmm. So, like, uh, I guess I wanted to get into this as well. This is kind of also along the same lines as what we were just talking about. But um, it's another uh, report from from the BBC. It's, it's a bit older, actually. But um, Pakistan's Sufis under attack from Islamic hardliners. So, for centuries, Pakistan was the land of Sufism, a tolerant mystical practice of Islam with uh, hypnotic rituals. It still has millions of followers, but with the spread of the hardline of hardline Islam, Sufism has been in retreat. So this is, I guess basically what this is, is just a precursor for the story that we just talked about. Yeah. But what I wanted to use with this story was I wanted to take a chance to actually explain to people that are listening what the different sects of Islam are. So, the first sect that we'll talk about, um, there's actually, there's quite a few, but we're going to talk about um, five specific ones because they, they hold the most relative, uh, I guess, believers in each category. So, I don't believe they're in any particular order. I'm just going to say them at, at random. So, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. They are in order. So, from like the most uh, percentage of the population that attends that, that particular sect. So, Sunni Muslims include 84 to about 90% of all Muslims. Sunni means tradition in, uh, I believe it's Arabic. I think that's correct. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, And Sunnis regard themselves as those who emphasize following the traditions of Muhammad and the first two generations of the community of Muslims that follow Muhammad. A number of movements for reform to reform Islam have originated mainly in the 21st century. Some are limited to one country and others have border influence. Most are Sunni movements such as Wahhabis, the Muslim Brotherhood, Jama'a, and Isla Islami. So, to I guess to kind of broaden that as well, um, Sunni is traditionally what is influenced in Iraq. That's the southern part of Iraq. Um, I believe Saudi Arabia is almost all Sunni. I think um, I think it's like the majority, like you said, it's the majority of Muslims in the world, mm. but it's a minority when it comes to like the Middle East. Mm. Is that right? And Shia is like the sort of Middle Eastern majority, but <clears throat> a massive minority outside of the Middle East. Is so that why? here I'll I'll, uh, I'll elaborate on that. Yeah. So. So Sunni was what we just talked about. The next one is Shiite Muslims, which comprise 10 to 16% of all Muslims. Shiite, Shiite, not Shiite, Shiites are the party of Ali, who believe that Muhammad's son-in-law, Ali, was design, was the design successor, Imam, and that the Muslim community should be headed by a designated descendant of Muhammad. So that would actually give you the... Basically, the straw man to punch, essentially. Yeah. So Shiites believe that there should be a, a head of an imam, basically. Um, the three main subgroups of Shiites are Twelvers, so that is the Ithana, 
and the Asaris, Seveners, the Isma Ilus, and the Fivers, the Zydists. So, not quite sure what that is, but it sounds like even within the, the Shiite Muslim population, there's three different sects that make up that particular population. Yeah. So, which it looks like it's the Shiites might be divided along political lines, but still all believe that there should be like an imam, which probably is what that is, is uh, each one of those groups thinks that their imam should be like the, the leader of Islam, yeah. probably. So, so then the next one is the Sufis. It actually doesn't give a percentage of the Muslim population that these, these folks are. But uh, I would take it they would probably fall around two or three percent. Probably yeah, quite like low. That. Yeah, it's probably not very high. So Sufis are Islamic mystics. So, or as you put it earlier, they're pretty much the Islamic hippies. So Sufis go beyond external requirements of the religion to seek a personal experience of God through forms of meditation and spiritual growth. A number of Sufi orders comparable to Christian. Monastic orders exist. Most Sufis are also are also Sunni Muslims, although some are Shiite Muslims. Many conservative Sunni Muslims regard S- Sufism as corrupt corruption of Islam, although most still regard Sufis as Muslims. So that kind of gives you a, a little bit of an insight as to probably what was going on in Pakistan with yeah. the backlash. There was probably uh, uh, an extreme group of people in Pakistan they're like those people are the devil and they like are a bastardate bastardization of Sunni Islam pretty yeah, much pretty much so yeah. um, and then we've got two more after this so actually there's there are more than two more but they wrap them all up into a little ball so this next group is called Baha'is which have you ever heard of that Baha'ism no, I don't think so Baha'i well, it'll explain it, but I'll, I can also give you a little bit more insight onto it. And then Amadayas. So, so Baha'is and Amadayas are 19th century offshoots of Shiite and Sunni Islam, respectively. Baha'is consider, consider themselves the newest of the major world religions, but recognize that historically they originated from Shiite Islam in the same way that Christianity originated from Judaism. Amadeus also regard themselves as Muslims. Most other Muslims, however, deny that either group is a legitimate form of Islam and regard them regard members of both groups as heretics, people who have corrupted and abandoned Islamic belief and practice. So, I also have a little bit of uh, insight onto Baha'is. Baha'is are they're actually quite they're quite different from what that actually what that actually entails too they they actually believe in like multiple prophets in their religion so they believe that like Jesus was a prophet yeah. Buddha was a prophet that uh, Muhammad was a prophet so basically they don't place any kind of deity in like Muhammad over any other prophet they all think that they're on like an even playing field and they all attain like enlightenment sort of yeah. so it's almost kind of some pan-Asian um Infusion into the into the religion. That's basically what Baha'i is. So I actually knew a guy in the states that was a Baha'i. Hopefully, I did him service. His name was uh, Shabab. So, and then he had, uh, I guess it was his cousin. His name was uh, Shabbat Mostanfek. So pretty cool name. But uh, anyways, shout out to those two guys if they ever do listen to this podcast. Finally, we have the last set of Islam. So this is the Druze, the Alavis, and the Alawites. Um, Alawites. You, yeah. ever, you ever heard, I've of, heard that? of the Alawites? Yeah. They were getting persecuted pretty hard in like Syria and Iraq. Yeah. Uh, so I said all three of those names. They're all small sectarian groups of the unorthodox beliefs and practices that split off from Islam. Druze and Alavis do not regard themselves as Muslims and are not considered Muslims by other Muslims. Alawis have uh, various non-Islamic practices, but debate continues as to whether they should be considered Muslims. So, but I guess they, I guess all of these um, sects that I've talked about, specifically the the latter two. Like you can see how they're kind of deviating and maybe even becoming 
more of a, yeah. more of a I guess a, a liberal stance on the Islamic viewpoint. So definitely does seem like the like the Protestant split going on there from Catholicism. Yeah, certainly. Well, that was some. Something that was in- interesting, at least to me, about Shiites that they believe that Muhammad's son-in-law Ali was design- the designated successor, and that there should be like a like there should be a, a line of state, basically like a pope, so to speak. Yeah. Although I think what they're what they're actually saying is not actually a pope figure, but the person that is the line is actually a deity, in in essence. So like. Uh, Muhammad was the deity, and then uh, Ali was the deity, and then whoever Ali's next of kin were was going to be a deity. So like you're supposed to follow them, almost like a an emperor sort of. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that's that's kind of just to give folks an idea of kind of where the Muslim community is and how it's kind of divided along really party lines and kind of how. You can see maybe just from the the brief descriptions that we provided for you why maybe they kind of clash against one another because the Sunni Muslims are really the hard line like conservative Muslims for the most part and the Shiite and Sunni populations are constantly battling against one another for I guess control and respect or I guess in different countries so so, John, you have anything else to add to that? Well, this is a big fuck up, basically. Yeah, it certainly is. It certainly is. So we've had a, a big pile up of uh, Islam, and we've hopefully educated most of you guys on kind of what you can expect if you run into anyone with with uh, maybe Islamic beliefs. But I definitely don't remember Islam being really like a factor before, like. Being about 15, 20, maybe. 2000, 2001 was whenever it all kind of changed. I didn't even know what really a Muslim was until after uh, September 11th. Of course, I was also in high school during that time. So, and kind of had my head up my ass. <laughs> but, and chasing tail or whatever. But, like, yeah. uh, I think it's... You're right, though. Like, in the West... Islam, we didn't really think of anyone hating us that as much as Islam apparently does. So, although I think if you sat down with someone that was a Muslim and asked them if they hate the West, I don't think most Muslims would say that unless they are extremely conservative. It probably depends upon what region that they're from. If you get an Indonesian Muslim, they're probably not going to say that they hate the West. But if you get someone maybe from Iran or... Iraq or Syria, yeah, you you would probably find some people that would be pretty pretty yeah. adamant about wanting to have your head. But you might also find that those places where there's like bulk hardcore fucking state suppression, mm. they might actually really fucking want the West, if you know what I mean. Yeah, Just absolutely. The fucking people living under the tyranny. Yeah, you're absolutely or right. Maybe like the fucking Indonesians that live in a like a semi kind of proto democracy. Mm. They could become a little bit more hardline and militant, all about their religion. If you know what I mean, right? Absolutely. It doesn't fucking doesn't fall every day on them so much. Right. Absolutely. When I think you and me, we we at least see a little bit of it on a on day to day basis, where we do deal with maybe some Indonesian people in Taiwan. So, and they definitely seem to be a a bit more uh, moderate Islam, for the most part. Like you don't yeah. hear about really any bombings coming out of Indonesia. It's a pretty peaceful uh, Muslim society. I mean... I'm not so sure, Chad. It's maybe not peaceful, but yeah. it's... Well, it's definitely, like like you said, it's it's a kind of a state-run country. So yeah. people are kind of living underneath the, the guys that don't, don't go against the grain here and, like, follow the rules of Islam. Well, Otherwise, we're going to have problems. Like the the hardline Islamists or the Islamists or whatever, they targeted like Bali mm. a few times, and they had a pretty successful Bali bombing that killed about two hundred and fifty people. Right, I do and remember that. And that was pretty much based on the fact that like Bali is the western destination. We're going here. We're headed nightclubs. We're going to blow the fuck up. We're trying to kill fucking westerners. If you know right. what I mean. Right. Kill this debauchery. If you know what I mean. So, right. Like yeah, Indonesia, interesting. Scott, yeah, you know. 
I see. But uh, <laughs> I was just amazed that a place like Malaysia mm. doesn't allow like a passport holder, like an Israeli passport holder, to come into the country. What? Really? It's one. It's one country. It's one of twelve or a number of countries, ten plus, uh, predominantly Muslim countries, hmm. that don't allow an Israeli to travel. Really? I had Can't no idea. In, yeah, and like, who puts any kind of pressure or heat on on uh, Malaysia for that kind of stance? That's. I didn't even know that. That's unheard of. Like, I was embarrassed as well. Like I was like, "Fuck, man!" I thought, like. <laughs> I've I've come from my like, I live or I have lived in the capital of my country, and I've seen the like the the residents of like the Malaysian diplomats and all that kind of shit. And it's like, you guys are fucking up to fuck all. Like you just right, you ban like Israelis like passport holding Israelis because they're Jewish, right? It's when like, what the fuck is that about? I I think uh, next time I run into a Malaysian person and they want to maybe bash Trump for wanting illegal immigrants to be kicked out, maybe I'll I'll be sure to bring this up. <laughs> be so like, well, uh, you can talk to me whenever you decide to release your travel ban on all Israeli people just simply for being Jewish or being Israeli. Israeli like, there's, they're not is, even Jewish. Yeah, not only Jewish or potentially Jewish. Yeah, but I it's mean, it's a you know, Jewish state, I guess. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty know. wild. I, I didn't even know that. So, I don't know can you name all the other other the other states? If you can, I can look it up. Look it up. Have yeah. a look. Make sure that I'm semi talking sense here, but I'm pretty damn sure. Like, say, uh, Israeli travel ban or something, or like Israeli passport travel ban or something like that. You'll find it, and there's you know there's like twelve countries, twelve to fifteen countries in the world that don't let them come in. Wow. So the Israeli uh, country bans. So here are the 16 countries. 16, not 12. 16 countries forbid admission to Israeli passport holders. Um, so it doesn't name all 16. I'm going to have to pull up a different one. But um, So the, I'll, I'll name the top. It looks like it's 10. So we have Algeria, Bangladesh, Brunei, Iran, Iraq, except for Iraqi uh, Kurdistan, Kurdistan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kuwait, Lebanon, Libya, and I'll find the other two. I'll find the other, I think, six left. Hold on. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I made that point, actually, because uh, the Bangladesh cricket team came to New Zealand over the summer, mm. uh, early in the summer or, like, in December. And uh, when, you know, Trump instigated his, like, sort of, there's a Muslim ban or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he put his, like, seven country ban on and everybody said it was a Muslim ban. Now I think it's been refined to something else. There's a different name for it now because it wasn't a Muslim ban. It was a ban on those seven countries. Mm. But anyway, that's not, that's not me defending him. It's, it's a dumb policy. Right. But I did say at the time, or, like, I did say, like, hey, um, you do realize that there are these, like, majority Muslim countries that ban, say, Jewish movement to them. Mm-hmm. And nobody fucking says shit about it, right? Mm. And you do know that one of those countries regularly tours our country and plays cricket here. Mm. And nobody protests that, right? Mm. Like, imagine Donald Trump coming to New Zealand, like, say, next week or mm-hmm. in a month from now. He would be protested like a motherfucker, if you know what I mean. Right. Bangladesh cricket team turns up here, gets to play on our nice fucking stadiums and pitches and grasses. Not a fucking peep. Yeah. Nobody says a fucking word. No one cares. And no one cares. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what the fuck? Who? Which one is more evil? <laughs> it's, like, it's like who? Like what? What is Bangladesh doing there with that Israeli fucking travel ban? Right. What are you doing there? You're so, doing that because of your belief system, your fucked up belief system, mm. and we let you travel into our country and play cricket. And mm. It's like, and no one cares. So here's the other. The other. Uh, countries as well. So I named off Algeria, Bangladesh, Brunei, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Lebanon, and Libya. Now we have Malaysia, as you just said, Oman, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Syria, the UAE, surprisingly, and Yemen. I'm actually very surprised that the UAE has banned uh, Israelis from coming in because aren't they supposed to be the moderate Muslim state? Who knows? Well, that's supposed to be the oil sheiks. Yeah. But Man. I think, like, what 
the way that people or well, the way that Israelis work around that is that um, they get issued a they get, oh yeah and there was even some of those countries even if you go to Israel mm. so if say me or you like we go to Israel and get an Israeli passport stamp mm-hmm. we can be barred from coming into their country mm. because we've just been to Israel mm. that's the only that's it right do you know what I mean now what's that about right so like you're an American I'm a, I'm a New Zealander but we might have like we might have traveled through Israel to get to fucking Jordan or like well not Jordan but like you know like to get to Saudi Arabia they wouldn't actually let us in the country because we had a fucking stamp like an Israeli stamp so like basically people have to travel with like two passports hmm. or like Israel doesn't even issue a stamp anymore because hmm. they don't want to hinder other people hmm like what's that about? So uh, I was looking. There's actually been an addendum to at least Malaysia. Malaysia clearance permit needed for the Ministry of Home Affairs. So basically, you have to get like a. Sounds like you have to get like visas and clear yourself through like a certain government office before you're all allowed to come in. So just to pl- or not play devil's advocate, but at least to play it straight down the line because those are the the countries that ban Israelis Israel has turned around and banned certain countries as well yeah sure, so, fair enough yeah, yeah. I, mean, well, I mean as you would kind of expect right yeah they banned Iran Kuwait Lebanon Libya Saudi Arabia Sudan Syria and Yemen uh, they do not allow entry for people with evidence of travel to Israel um, let's see other than that everyone else is pretty much welcome so if uh, so, there are some reciprocating countries that ban Israelis, and the Israelis ban them. But there's a, quite a few countries, as I just mentioned, that ban Israelis, but Israel does not ban them. They're kind of like, all right, you're banning us, but we we have nothing against you guys. It's so. it's like it's like the thought experiment of say um, of say like Gaza, like mm. say Gaza and uh, like Israel. Have the thought experiment of like if one of these two sides happened overnight to no longer have any arms, mm-hmm. what would happen? So imagine if like on one side and one theoretical, mm-hmm. Israel no longer has any kind of defense, mm-hmm. but the Israeli, uh, sorry, the, the Palestinians and the Gaza Strip still have their guns, their bombs, whatever. Mm-hmm. And obviously the Arabic world does too, but like let's just keep it to there. Mm-hmm. What do you think that they would do to, to Israel, like a defenseless Israel? It would be gone. Think of it the other way. Right. So this thought experiment overnight, only the Israeli people have, or only Israel has the guns, mm-hmm. and Gaza is no longer has any weapons. What do you think the Israeli people would do to, to Gaza? It would probably become part of Israel, wouldn't it? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they just fucking leave it alone. Maybe right. they don't give a fuck. Right. Maybe it's a small piece of shit on the side here. That right, like, they just they don't can want be them. rockets coming into their fucking towns. Right. And maybe they'd be like, well, you got no arms anymore, so good luck, go do your shit. Like, they wouldn't really give a fuck. Right. But, like, think of that kind of thought experiment mm-hmm. when you set up, like, the Israel versus Arabic kind of thing. Like, who's really fucking pushing right. the buttons, man? Well, what's, what's interesting also about uh, Israel... And this is probably why there's such a hard stance. I, we really need to get your gap on. That's what like, I want. We, we want your gap yeah, on. That's fuck. I wanted to ask him a lot of this shit, man. Because like, he yeah, would be a very, very interesting guy. Knowledgeable person. Folks, knows. we're trying to get a, a gentleman named Yorgev on uh, who is from Israel. Shout and, out, Yorgev. Yeah, and he can uh, he can give us a little bit of perspective on kind of what's going on in Israel. So, and probably. Tell us, you know, obviously it might be a little bit anecdotal because, I mean, he's just one guy, but it's it's good to hear it from the horse's mouth, you know what I mean? Like, John and I, are neither one of us are Israeli and don't really know any other Israelis, so I think it would be it would be nice to hear his perspective on things. So, uh, but... Yeah, we got a little... We, we, we went fucking well off the reservation. Yeah, there, we, right? we've gone very deep into Monster. Israeli pos- politics... Yeah. But I think the one thing that I, or the point that I wanted to make was like I think a lot of uh, a lot of the Middle East is threatened by Israel because one they're pretty much the standing pillar of basically democracy in the Middle East. 
Like they're a democratic country and a true democratic country. Yeah. They elect their leaders just like anyone in the West would do. Whereas if you look at what's happening in the rest of the Middle East, like not really. I mean, maybe it's Iraq can make yeah. a case for it, but I mean, most of those guys have been put in place by the United States and will probably lose their power and we'll see something, we'll probably see the Middle East fall into more dictatorships as we have seen in the past. Or it'll be run by some kind of caliphate. So. I think it'll, I don't think it'll be a caliphate. I think it'll just, yeah, it'll just be strong men. Yeah. Get it done. Exactly. A la, like, Saddam 2.0. Mm. I think we'll, we'll be like, all right, well, yeah. you know, we tried to give them something else, so then yeah. this other shit sprouted up. And it's like, I didn't want it. Maybe we put the hard man back in, and then we don't have to actually go and bang. Mm. You know what I mean? We can kind of put it under the carpet. The hard man can sort it out. Exactly. And then we can say how bad he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. Well, I think we've uh, we've beat Islam to death. So, but uh, your Gev, we want to have you on. Know your role, man. Get on. We need to talk to you. Yeah, don't get too pissed on a Saturday night, mate. Yeah, we need you, we need you on the Sunday. Yeah, we need you. We need you. So uh, I guess to close us out, we'd like to thank uh, Mark from Beer Geek. Um, we're actually not at Beer Geek today. Yeah, we, and we might never be allowed back yeah, we, after we, this fucking absolute fucking horrific ramble against Islam. <laughs> but, uh, no. Hopefully you'll forgive us. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyways, like, uh, hope, hope you're doing well, Mark. Um, we'll see you soon. I hope you're doing well, Chad. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I hope all the imams out there are doing well as well. Yes. Have a smile on your face and say something nice. <laughs> How about I do that? Yeah, get in your yellow submarine. Yeah. Um, also, folks, please hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. Also, you can check out our YouTube page. Just look for The ParrotCast. So we have a dedicated YouTube channel that we put up our episodes regularly, but they're usually a week behind. So um, the iTunes, also you can find us on that. And we do, on a, if you subscribe to our Facebook Friends page, you'll get a regular update with the episode attached to it so you'll know whenever a new episode comes out and you can listen to it. So if you have any comments, questions, or just want to get in touch with us, best way to do it, hit us up on Facebook. Yeah, shout out Grant. Yeah, thank you, Grant. You're a big man. So he, uh, he regularly calls us out. And he likes to contribute to the podcast, so thank contrarian, you very much. Contrarian, I think. Greg. Yeah, I think yeah. you're a bit of a contrarian. Yeah, I th- yeah, I would I would agree with that. So, but anyways, Grant, we we very much appreciate your uh, your addition to the podcast that we do do, because without you, the Parrotcast would not be changing. So we're always trying to evolve. Yeah, you're so. our flight of the Concords number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Thank you very much, folks. Take care.